The election of a president, whom many find controversial, give his protesters the right to take their acts beyond peaceful. One University of Chicago student thinks so. We headed out in Siberian temperatures to see if his peers could follow that logic. How important is civility in our political discourse? I completely disagree with trying to prevent somebody uh, that you disagree with from, from speaking. I don't think they need to go beyond speech. I just think they just need to bother to actually show up for speech. Things, civil discourse and academic freedom, they go by side by side. I think that probably depends on your political persuasion. No, I think protesting is fine as long as it stays civil because otherwise the message just gets lost. I don't think there is any outcome in being violent. Sean Spicer, who's the president-elect, Donald Trump's um, press secretary, was invited to speak here. And there was one student who was protesting his visit, um, suggesting that students, uh, it either gets shut down or that students projectile vomit on him, or not on him, but at the event. What do you think about that? I'm for civility. That's not civility. Some people, uh, you know, took it as more as a sense of humor. We go to UVA, University of Virginia, and there was some actions from the university police on election night that were completely inappropriate, like harassment type of behaviors mm. that I think they felt they were entitled to do now that Trump had been elected. I would say that from my own perspective, it is important not to normalize Donald Trump, that a number of um, things that I didn't like under the Obama administration, like the criminalization of Black Lives Matter, um, is going to uh, get worse under President-elect Trump's policies. It is important to not normalize Trump, and it is also important to normalize Trump, because I believe that some of the things that Trump has been saying and some of the reasons why people voted him, he's actually back treating on those promises that he made earlier before his elections. Now, in this last election, did you or did anyone you know vote for Hillary Clinton? I did, and a number of the people that I'm close to did. Yeah, I would say most of my friends. Yes. Uh, yes, I voted for her. Yeah, me too. Do you know anybody who voted for Donald Trump? I do, within my family. I do not know, but I know people who know people who did. I actually don't think so. Do I? Do we have any friends? Oh, no, I do. Friend of a friend. Okay. I don't talk to them much. The students we talk to don't support violent responses to opposing viewpoints, but they don't have much exposure to differing views either, and they're not terribly interested in changing that. What are the implications for higher education when our best universities are not marketplaces for ideas, but echo chambers? What happens if an entire generation refuses to follow the logic?